Okay, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to share with you some information regarding a test I did when I was in Borrego Springs, California at nightfall 2024. I did a test on the 3rd of November, the afternoon, uh, to see what I could do as far as what results would I get if I uh, attempted to do sky flats. Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to the channel. So if you've been following the channel, you know that I've made a decision to place both my telescopes into a remote observatory. So one of the contingencies uh, that I'm working on is in the event I have to do sky flats, could I do them? Um, so let's go into, um, into this view here. Uh, I actually recorded this video, but it turned out I didn't have, um, for some reason it didn't capture the audio. But um, what you see here is I'm a Nina user, and Nina has the flat wizard, and it has a wizard mode for sky flats, and basically uh, listing all your um, filters uh, in your filter wheel. You can list them there. And um, so, bottom line, I think, again, across multiple days, I could capture a complete set of sky flats in particular for my edge HD8 where I'm not going to be rotating when you get into a situation though like my red cat 51 that has a rotator um, I think it becomes more of a challenge and so I'm gonna show with you uh, how I'm mitigating uh, that challenge but for right now I just want to uh, play a little bit of this and I'll just do a talk over. I think I'm, uh, prior to this point in the video, I had actually tested with uh, HASI and O3. And I think, you know, if you're working within a window of a sunset and twilight, uh, you got to pick the right filters in the right time. Uh, so if I had started off with Luminous, I would not have achieved my goal of uh, 50 percent of uh, ADU uh, plus or minus 10 and uh, what you see here over on this screen is uh, an HA uh, flat that I captured and uh, we're right around the, the center of the uh, histogram which I believe indicates when you're in that range you're in the linear range of the sensor again um, there's a lot I don't know but uh, but let's go back to this video here. And uh, so let me play a little bit of it. And um, yeah, let me try and get that uh, display off of there. All right, so um, here I'm showing uh, what the options are that you can set within uh, for each of the filter. And if you notice up there, it says single mode or multi multi mode, so we're in multi mode now, and uh, you can turn on and off the filters. Uh, but the key thing is, uh, if we uh, go back just a little bit here, and again, I'm sorry for this, uh, you'll see that you have some parameters here that you can set for each of the filters, and uh, what your minimum exposure is, and what your maximum exposure is, what your histogram mean target goal is, and uh, mean tolerance. So um, I think at this point, you know, that's basically the facility with a Nina. If you're a Nina user, you're already familiar with it. Uh, you know, uh, I did slew to the Zenith, and, um, and then I went ahead and took a series of uh, uh, sky flats. I just took one for each filter, um, but uh, let's go over and look at uh, what I actually captured. So, okay, we're on the screen here, and again, I've got uh, uh, the uh, ZWO ASI fits view uh, to look at the uh, files I've captured. And so here's one for uh, HA. This is a uh, HA uh, filter if we look up here. 
And here's a list of all the ones that I captured over on the, on the right hand side. And uh, so I'm just going to step through a couple of them here. Uh, here's another, uh, this is an S2 uh, flat. Um, I can take the histogram away, I guess, or, or move it down or move it over here. Um, so, you know, these look pretty much like flats. And again, the um, fidelity coming across the, uh, through the video uh, might not be an actual representation, but, um, you know, this is not unlike the flat that I would take with a flat panel. Um, so let's go and, uh, go on to the next one. Uh, this one here is the O3 and again, um, okay. Um, I met my goal of where I want to be with the histogram and everything. Uh, then, uh, we'll go into, uh, this is, uh, a red. This is the blue. Oh, this is a green RGB, RGB. Uh, and, uh, this is the, um, blue. So again, um, and then we'll just kind of uh, run through some of these because there's something that happens. Uh, and again, that's why um, I, again, across multiple days, within certain hours, um, I think I could build a scheme uh, based on priority of filter. So when there's the most light, I'm going to be wanting to use my narrow band filters and then... Uh, Clearly, I, I probably want to use my luminous filter uh, last. So let's, uh, let's put this down for a minute and let's just kind of step through some of these. Um, HA again, red, red, red. Okay, now I'm actually capturing, uh, I think I was capturing 12. Let's see how many, how many was I doing? Um, yeah, so let's just kind of go through here. Red. Let me just look over here and make sure what I I know what you're seeing. Okay, now we're going to start to see some stars come in. Uh, I think that's what... Uh, we're on the greens now. And let's just ch check where we're at with the histogram. Uh, we're in the greens. Now we're into the blues. Okay, now we get to the loom. And now we start to see stars. So again, I think what you have to do, I tried doing sky flats. So a couple years ago, I tried to do it early in the morning, had a t-shirt on the scope and all that. And it just didn't seem to work out for me at that time. Uh, working between sunset and twilight, I see a pathway to success, but I'm, I'm going to have to be very particular at, um, kind of within that window of uh, sunset to twilight, what time I kick off each of the filters. Because what you see here now is, you know, with the loom, uh, we're getting stars, as you can see on, on the histogram here. So um, let's go back into uh, kind of um, wrap this one up. It's going to be a short one. So, um, so I see a pathway uh, to success doing sky flats. Clearly many imagers do sky flats and if they can be successful with it, uh, I can be successful with it. And I imagine you can be successful with it as well, but you have to have a procedure. And I think part of that procedure is going to be the time within that window that you have to work with on when you do, uh, which filter. 
And again, I think that's a scheme that's probably easy to work out uh, based upon uh, trial and error. Uh, but uh, let me uh, do something here now. Um, but um, what I have decided to do based upon that uh, test is uh, I'm going to make things a little bit easier for me. And when it comes to my Red Cat 51, uh, I ordered the uh, Red Cat 51 flap panel from Deep Sky Dad. Um, with my Red Cat 51, I have a rotator on there. And once I start rotating my camera, that means I should be taking a corresponding flat. So any target that I shoot where I rotate off of zero, uh, I should be capturing a flat at that rotation angle. And with sky uh, correction with uh, target scheduler, uh, I can sometimes do five targets in a night and I expect some are gonna be at different rotation angles. So uh, I just decided, okay, uh, spend the money, you know, money can fix a lot of things and, uh, and, uh, I'll see how this works out. I'm again, having the flat panel or what, uh, deep sky dad calls the flap panel. Uh, and this is the upgraded one, the FP two, uh, it should make my life easier again you know, once these telescopes go in, I can no longer be in front of that telescope to do tasks. Now, the observatory will have remote hands that I can hire at $50 an hour to do tasks for me. I would like to keep the need to do that to a minimum, but if I had to, there's, you know, I could employ them. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a solution as well. But again, that's uh, throwing money <laughs> uh, at, at the issue. I also decided to order the uh, Celestron C8 panel, FP2, for my Edge HD8. So I've been communicating back and forth with Deep Sky Dad, uh, sending him pictures, um, and uh, he built this to fit the C8. And when I look at the optical tube dimensions of the C8 and the optical tube dimensions of the edge HD8, uh, they appear to be identical, including a slight chamfer on the, the very front part of the, uh, of the scope of the, of the outer body. Uh, so, um, I decided to go with this, uh, this panel as well. And, um, and while I'm not going to be rotating, uh, the edge HD8, um, I want to be able to take uh, flats when you're not moving your telescope when it's mounted on a pier and uh, you can build a flats library and use that flats library over a period of time. This is what I'm getting from uh, experienced uh, imagers that have their uh, telescopes and remote observatories or have them in stationary positions in their backyard and they don't move them or tear them down, set them or whatever. So, um, but this will enable me to refresh, uh, my flats. Uh, all right. Um, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always like share and subscribe. And while I'm not going to be doing trips, and I, I had a person comment that they really uh, don't like the direction the channel's going. And I understand that. Uh, and fair enough. Uh, they like the trip portion of me being out in the field and seeing me out there. And uh, I, I can appreciate that. But uh, it's just uh, I have to go in a different direction now. But I think I'm going to be producing uh, content that might be of interest to others. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are looking to place things into remote observatories, their backyards, not right. And all those type of things. So, you know, um, I do the channel, not so much to make money because I really don't make any money on the channel. Uh, I do it to document my journey. And if somebody 
uh, looks at some of my videos and can pull something from them that helps them, you know, as far as uh, guiding or whatever, uh, I think that's great. But this is really kind of just so I can look back and see what my journey has been like in the uh, area of astrophotography. So, okay. Thanks again for uh, dropping into the channel. I do think sky flats can be uh, very doable. I mean, many people use them and they have no issues whatsoever. But based upon the results I saw at the one attempt I took at it, I think I could develop a scheme to be just as successful and uh, produce uh, good quality sky flats uh, if I had to. But uh, again, I'm going to go... Uh, and just kind of hedge my bets a little bit with these two uh, flap panels from uh, uh, Deep Sky Dad, and uh, make things a little bit uh, a little bit easier. All right, wherever you may be in the world, hopefully you're looking forward to some clear skies and getting some imaging done. Other than that, see you next time.